Praise the Lord today, saints, hallelujah. I praise God on this beautiful Monday. And it's a wonderful day to be alive and to praise and worship Jesus and to listen to his voice today, speaking to us and reminding us of his great and awesome love and mercy and grace. And, and you know, the Lord has us here to instruct his people and those who would desire to come into the faith in his righteousness and in his in his mercy and in justice and all the ways of the Lord because the Holy Spirit has been given that we would be conformed and transformed into the image of Christ and there are many many areas of life that we all have to grow in and one of them is walking in peace and there's two types of peace and so today we're going to speak about that hallelujah from the scripture and we're going to praise God for it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray that you will just touch this message and that you will anoint it, Lord. Anoint in my tongue, Father, I pray, with your Holy Ghost. And Lord, just speak what you want to speak here and, and just say what you want to say. And let me just hear your voice clearly, oh God. Hallelujah. Open the hearts to receive your truth, Lord, that it would bear fruit for your glory and for your great name's sake. Hallelujah. And crush any demonic forces, any uh dark powers or principalities or dominions or spiritual wickedness that would try to hinder your word lord from bringing forth the fruit you so desire in the mighty name of jesus amen hallelujah now two types of peace now right here in the book of luke chapter 12 we have this story here two little stories and jesus is speaking Verse 13, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? So here's this, this man asking Jesus to speak to his brother that he divide the inheritance with him. So he's speaking of earthly goods, earthly possessions here. And he said unto them, take heed, okay? First, Jesus said, who made me a judge or a divider over you? In other words, Jesus is like saying, you know, I'm not concerned about these earthly things, okay? And today, Jesus is not so much, uh, his kingdom is not so much concerned with these earthly things, okay? It's more the spirit that God wants us to understand this. Because, see, we're coming into a time in this in this world when, when all the nations are being shaken, okay, and all the things of the world are being shaken. And so as believers, we have to make sure that we know where we are in the Lord. Hallelujah. So Jesus, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, and he says unto us today, take heed and beware of covetousness, avarice, greediness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. A man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. So if you look around your house, I've said this before in messages, look at all the things you possess, okay? Whatever you possess today, whatever is in your charge that God has given you steward over, none of that stuff. Okay, none of it. A man's life does not consist, consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, Now this parable is a principle. It is a principle. Now, what that means is it's throughout all of our life. I mean, any area of our life, this principle holds true. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. <clears throat> and he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, 
eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself. The person who lays up treasure of this world for himself is a fool. Right here. But God said unto him, Thou fool, thou fool. God called this man a fool. So look at this principle. So if, if you have it in your mind, if we have it as people in our mind, I have to get this and get so much of that and get so much of this for my life here on this earth. Okay. We're like this. We're like this guy. Okay. In principle, we are. We're, we're like him. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself. He's like this guy. And is not rich toward God. See, this is where we have to be, rich toward God. In other words, everything that God has put in our care, our stewardship, whatever it is, anything and everything, we must keep it toward God for God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you turn over to, we'll hold our place there and go over to John chapter 14. Okay. And Jesus is speaking here in verse 27, John 14, 27. He says to the apostles, and he says to his church, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, Jesus knows about the, the fear and the afraidness that can come upon us in our walk in this world. And so he says, peace I leave with you. Tranquility, prosperity. Okay, that's what that word means, peace. I leave with stillness. I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth there's a peace from the world oh yeah yeah there's a peace that the world gives okay but Jesus says my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth the world order that word world there is cosmos it means the orderly arrangement of men, of the nations. Okay, Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And Jesus is saying here that he wants us to understand that as the nations crumble in this earth, because they're going to crumble, that we have to know that it's his peace that we possess so that no matter what happens with our earthly goods that God has given us to steward we still have peace and we walk in that peace of the Lord Jesus hallelujah I I remember a story I was listening to dr. James Dobson's focus on the family back in the 90s and he had a pastor and his wife on and they were talking about uh, what happened to them they had 10 children, and there was about a, a three or four year period in between, I think it was a five year interlude between the first five children and the second five children, okay? So there's like a five year intermission there where they didn't have any children. And so they had five of their children in their van from 13 years old right down to the littlest, which was like two years old. And they're driving down the interstate and going to one of their older children's house for the weekend. And as they're going, 
this truck in front of them swerved real fast and there was a big cement block right in the middle of the highway and they slammed right into that thing and their van burst into flames and the mother and the father and the 13 year old got out they, they drug the 13 year old out the other four children burned to death inside of the van and then their oldest son that was with them the 13 year old he had always wanted to fly in a helicopter and they life flighted him he got to fly in a helicopter and on the way to the hospital he died so they lost all five of their children in one hour all five of their children their youngest children were gone to be with the Lord in one hour this husband and wife were standing on the side of the highway and they were worshiping God and they had peace because they knew Jesus now I can't think of anything would that would be a little you know tragic as tragic as that happening to a family losing five children in one hour and yet here they are standing worshiping God this was their testimony see Jesus's peace is not as this world gives peace the world's peace is dependent upon you having everything you want or need and nobody hurting you nobody saying bad things about you and nobody doing this to you or that to you and oh, and your job is good and it's it's a pretty good relatively good job easy job and you make good money and this is the world's peace this is what the world's peace is dependent upon and if you if you as a believer are are staking your claim upon peace as everything going good and everything keeps going good in this society one day when society breaks down you will lose that peace then where do you run then where do you go Jesus says today to come to him right now and take his peace he is the Prince of Peace and because he lives with inside of us we should have peace at all times no matter what goes on in this world no matter what goes on in our life we have peace with God hallelujah through our Lord Jesus Christ we have the peace that he gives my peace give I unto you not as the world gives give I unto you and he said peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth see the world will give you peace if you go along with the world if you compromise with the world but if you don't compromise with the world the world will make it hard for you okay and that's even in the religious world of Christianity today. You can comp if you compromise the truth on one point, two point, three point four, or one point two points, the, the the religious world will 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 give you peace. They will they will say, okay, all right, we can control that one. But if you don't compromise the truth on any point, do not compromise the truth on any point then the religious world will not give you peace see they will not give you peace do you realize there are there are thousands of denominations within the Christian religion thousands of denominations and all of them differ in one way or another but Jesus didn't come to set up a denomination he came to die for the sin of mankind so that he could have a new creation and we are born from heaven see he is our king he is our priest and then he says in the word that he's made us kings and priests see so that we we have a direct line with God as believers and and our soul man is coming into submission unto the spirit man this is what the Holy Spirit's working this into us and we're learning how to walk by faith more and more and not by sight as believers this is vitally important because things change in society you look at Oklahoma you know back in May those two tornadoes one big tor well there were several but one big one hit in Shawnee and then another one hit in more Oklahoma again and those people's lives many of those people they many of them their their life was set on their possessions their life was set on their things and some of them their life was set on Christ their life was set on the Lord but I venture to say most their life were set on their self and their things and in one hour that it was all gone see 
So as long as everything was going smooth and everything was going hunky-dory, everything was fine. But then tragedy strikes, and bam, where's the peace? Look at that couple on the side of the highway, pastor and his wife. Their children were taken in one hour. God is, is in total control of every event in this earth. God has control. And God chose to take that mother and that father's children in that hour, and he took them to glory. And they were worshiping God and saying, Oh God, thou bless your name, Holy One. Hallelujah. See? Because they had Jesus. They had the peace of Jesus. And only Jesus will get us through this hour that we're in. Only Jesus will carry us through the testing times that are coming down the road. Many people have been in many testing times throughout the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. There are mothers right now today, maybe you're one of them, you're hearing my voice, and you, you've you been praying for your children. I know me and my wife, we pray for our children every day. We've been praying for our children. You're praying for your children. This is a test. God says, will you persevere in prayer? Will you keep praying? See, because God says, I promise to bring your seed from the north, south, and east, and the west. See, God, that's a promise we can stand on in the Holy Scripture in Isaiah chapter 43. See, Jesus' peace is himself. It's not like the world gives. The world's peace is, is having everything in all your ducks in a row, so to speak. And nobody's get, making you mad. Nobody's, you know, everything's just nice and hunky-dory, so to speak. That's the world's peace. But Jesus' peace is himself. And he said to the apostles, and he says to you, and he says to me, Peace I leave with you. Do we believe that? Yes, we do. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, this rich, this, this guy here who was who who planted these fields, this fool, God called him a fool. He had peace. Look, look at, listen to it again. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So he was a rich man. He brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? What shall I do? Uh, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. I have no room where to have my food storage. Where to have my this or my that to make me, to help me get through the hard times. See, they're, they're depending on something of this earth for peace. For peace. And Jesus said, no. I don't give that. That's not my peace. That's as the world gives. And the world peace, okay? I mean, there are people right now who have underground shelters. They have underground food storages. And all it will take is one earthquake. And all that's destroyed in one second. I mean, in one minute, destroyed. Just gone. And then where, what are they going to do? Are they going to freak? Are they going to be, ah, you see? Because... Their peace is dependent upon that being there. They might have it out in the country, and they live in a big city. Maybe they have it out in East Texas, and it's in the deep thicket, you know, in the in the big thicket they call it, the big one of the biggest forests in the world. It's in the big thicket, and they got it hid out. But they live in Dallas, okay, and they go in the weekends down to the little place in the big thicket. But then on uh, you know Tuesday night something happens, and they can't get out of Dallas. They can't get to their to their food storage. See? What happens? Where is your peace? You got to make sure your peace is in Jesus. That Jesus is your peace. Because you can't depend on these things. Look what Jesus says. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul. Listen, now look at this into the pride. I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. And many people today in the faith, they, they proclaim the name of Jesus. They profess his name. They confess his name. They say, oh, I got plenty. Ah. Oh, they say to their soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool. See, once again, see what God calls people who depend upon their riches, people who depend upon their things, thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. 
Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. There is no peace for the person who lays up treasure for themselves. God sees to it. Because God sees their only focus is the big letter I. See, there's two types of peace. There's the world's peace, and then there's the true peace, which is the Lord Jesus' peace. And the world is trying to get peace right now. They're trying to have peace in the earth. And it's all fake, and it's all a lie, and it's all a control. It's, 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 if they can get control over the masses of people, they think they're going to have peace. See? But it's not going to happen, says the Lord. They cannot have peace. Because the Prince of Peace is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true peace. And they have rejected him. The world has rejected Jesus Christ. But today, if you're not saved, and you're hearing this, you can come to Jesus and get saved. You can believe the gospel and repent of your sins and get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. God will make you a brand new creation born of the Lord Jesus Christ by his spirit and precious blood. Born from heaven. A new creature where it don't matter what happens in the world anymore. Because you know you're secure in him. Hallelujah. By his grace through faith. Hallelujah. Come to him today. Don't be like this fool. See, That's a strong word, fool. When somebody calls you a fool. God's calling this type of person a fool. Right here in the red letters. But God said unto him, Thou fool. Thou fool. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. And I know many people who are Christians. They say, God told me to do this. God told me to have this food storage. And God told me, okay, I'm not going to argue with that. But what I'm saying is God sees deeper than what people profess with their mouth. God sees deeper in their heart. Okay? And and you got to make sure it is the Lord that told you to do such things. If you have done such things. Those of us, those of you who, who maybe you can't have a food storage. You don't have enough of the resources to get a big giant food storage or whatever. No problem. Because see, God said, Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. See, not as the world gives. In other words, you can trust God because you can prosper in the spirit and, and, and wait upon the Lord and watch the Lord deliver you each and every day, one day at a time. Not, you, you can't think about Friday. Today's Monday. Today we worship God today. This is the day the Lord has made. We got to remember these things because this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, one time, one one day in the future, you know, all this electronic stuff can just shut down and you won't be hearing this broadcast. Do you know the Lord today? Are you are you in the Lord today? Are you studying his word and praying and seeking him? Are you humbling yourself? Are you taking up your cross? Are you following him? Are you denying yourself? If you profess Jesus and you you say that you're born anew from heaven and filled with his spirit, a person that's born again and filled with the spirit of God is one who denies himself and takes up his cross and is always thinking about others. That's a true believer. Okay? And if you're a husband and you have a family, what are you? You're, you're, you're dying to yourself. You're taking up your cross. You're following Jesus. And your first and your foremost duty is to God. And as a husband and as a father, your second duty is to your wife. And your third duty is to your children. And then comes your job and your employment and, and all the things you need to do to supply that God has given you the skills. God has given you the breath. God has given you the know-how. Everything comes from God. See, don't be like this fool and think you're doing it. God is the one who's given you the ability and you are cooperating with God to, to do so that your family can be supplied with what it needs. There's there's so much 
in this peace that Jesus has given us. He has blessed us with it. He gave it to us, and he is the peace. He is the prince of peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 says, he's the prince of peace. He's the everlasting father. He's the holy one. Hallelujah. Now, in John chapter 20, it says again, Jesus reiterates this three times in this book, maybe more. In John 20, Jesus says to the apostles, verse 21, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. He's visiting them after the resurrection. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. When Jesus was sent of the Father, he wasn't worried about the, the world. He knew the whole world lies in wickedness. He wasn't worried about the world order and changing the world order. No. He was concerned with heaven and the Father and doing the Father's will. See, when Jesus came down here to this earth, he bound up the strong man, the devil, and he spoiled his house, and he's still spoiling it today. Hallelujah. And if we as believers will get in line with what he's doing, hallelujah, we will be more prosperous and more prosperous in the things of God. And that's more important than being prosperous in the things of this world that are going to burn up. You see, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, the whole world will look at you. How can you be so tranquil? How can you be so uh, joyful? How can you be so rejoicing in a time such as this when all society is breaking down? It's because of the one who reigns in my heart, the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not been thrown off of his throne. He is still there. And he is reigning at the Father's right hand. And he lives in my heart and he reigns in here. See, you can share that with them. And they'll either say, I want that, or they'll say, I'm going to kill you because you have that. See, God is God Almighty and he has saved us for his good purpose, which is to transform us into the image of his son. And it is a walk. It is a walk that we're walking out, cooperating with the Holy Spirit as he's doing the work. See, and peace he gives to us. Peace be unto you. As my father had sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive you the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Receive you the Holy Ghost. This is, this was the type he was breathing on them. He's saying, get ready. Hallelujah. Verse 26. After eight days again, his disciples were, with, were, with, were within and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. See, Jesus comes. This is what he says. Peace be unto you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus comes. He says, fear not. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. Peace be unto you. Thomas was. <laughs> then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. The true and the living God is true, and he's living. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. See, Thomas, he had that peace. When he saw Jesus, he knew, Okay, he's risen. It's sad that he. He wouldn't believe until he saw him. See, I know one time my wife, she saw the feet of Jesus. We were working in a house when we had our business and, and she was standing and we had our music playing and she looked over and she saw a white robe and she saw the feet of Jesus right there. She began to weep and cry. We just began to pray. It was a beautiful time. Hallelujah. And another time he came and visited us when we had a little booth at a flea market in Oklahoma City and the Lord came and visited us one day just looked at us looked right at us and he had a tear come down his face and I know it was the Lord sharing about both of us just looked at each other we said that's the Lord I ran out there to go get him <laughs> but he was gone and you know the Lord can condescend he can come he can come to you you know don't be be careful that you entertain strangers, it says in Hebrews. See? Because it might be an angel. It might be the Lord himself knocking on your door one day. We have to be very, very careful. 
that we that we hear what the Lord says. Now I want I want to share this parable or this this story with you out of the Scripture. When they said they said to Jesus, "Hey, do, should we pay taxes to Caesar or not?" And Jesus said, "Give me a coin." And they gave him a denarius. They gave him a coin. And Jesus said, "Whose image and superscription is this?" And he turned it over. And they said, "Caesar's." See the money. It had a, a, a stamp of Caesar's face on it. And Jesus handed the money back to him. And he said, you give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That was the money. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But give to God what belongs to God. Jesus said, whose image is this? Caesar's, the money. Okay. And whose image are we? Whose image are we made after? Are we not created and made after the image of God? So Jesus is saying, you give that image of Caesar to Caesar, but you give the image of God to God. You give yourself to God. You surrender yourself to God. You say, God, take myself, this self-importance. God, take this self-reliance. you know, reliance. Lord, take this self this, the self, that, all of our self, and all of that it contains. Lord, take it. I give it to you to do with what you want to do. And the Lord says, I want to crucify your self where I can flow through you. And you can be my representative. You can be my ambassador. And I can flow through you with my grace, with my mercy, with my peace, with my joy, with my love, with all the fruit of the Spirit, my faith, my self-control, everything can flow through you, my justice, my righteousness, that is in me. Everything that's in me can flow through you. Whenever we get rid of this old self, the more we die daily, the more he'll flow through us with his peace. And that peace surpasses all understanding because the world's peace, like I said, it is dependent upon this world system staying afloat and everything going fine. And God says only his people, those who are truly born again, and I mean truly born again, born anew from heaven, those who are truly filled with the Holy Spirit will walk in peace. As the world crumbles, we will walk in peace because we have the right type of peace, which is a person, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this word today. And Lord, I pray it penetrate the heart of the believer. And Lord, I pray that you so anoint the word that it will take deeper root and deeper root, Lord, as it's listened to and heeded, O oh God. And Father, I pray we don't be like the fool, Lord, recorded right here in Luke 12. We don't be like this fool. You called him a fool, Lord, because he was relying upon himself and relying upon his own goods. No, oh God, any believers right now, Lord, who really love you, Lord, and, and they've been doing that, and they know in the secret of their heart, Lord, that they're depending on these things. Lord, I pray you bring them conviction today. They repent. And does it mean they have to get rid of you? You, know, you tell them what to do with their stuff, Lord. You tell them what to do. Lord, you speak to your people today. You bring conviction where it needs to be brought. And Lord, I pray that the peace that you are, which surpasses all understanding, will rule and reign in our hearts this day and every day. I thank you so much for touching Sharon and I, Lord, today with your peace. And every day, God, you, your peace is right with us. It's in us. And we need to let it flow out of us, Lord. We need to let it be guiding us through the day. You, Lord, you lead your people forth, it says in the word in peace hallelujah you lead us forth in peace hallelujah and it's not the world's peace the world's peace is the world's peace and it's not any peace at all Lord hallelujah it's fake it's a lie but your peace is true hallelujah we bless you and praise you and thank you for it, Jesus for doing the work for us Lord I pray you save souls today father I pray the rest of the saints will pray the same, Lord, that you reach the lost. Hallelujah. We pray for our brothers and sisters in prison today, O oh God. We pray for that family in, in uh, Arizona, Lord, who the man is in prison, in, in jail for 
having Bible studies at his house. Oh God, I pray, Lord, you touch him today. Fill him with your joy and peace and his wife and six children, God. Touch him, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, touch us all with your joy and peace today. Let it rule and reign in our hearts, Lord. Crush every demonic force that would try to hinder that from happening and quicken our discernment, oh God. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord bless and keep all who are his. The Lord bless you, keep you, make his holy face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. Grant you peace. Hallelujah. That's Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And his name, his authority, and his character. And part of his character is peace. Hallelujah. Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Oh, hallelujah. He is love. He is mercy. He is grace. May it be upon you today and flow through you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless all who are his. And if you don't know him today, you come to Jesus. He will not turn you away. He never turns away a contrite and broken heart. And he will receive you. Hallelujah. Believe the gospel. Repent of your sins and, and get right with God. Hallelujah. For time is short. Amen.